here is a pleasure for me and um, to speak about a topic that is so close to me. I'm Nora Sayaka and I'm passionate about graduating duties and consoles and also do repairs of these systems. And over the past few years, I've spent a lot of time collecting and restoring these devices and these iconic machines from the past. And it all started as a hobby, and then it became quickly a full-blown passion. Especially during COVID, uh, during the lockdown, as many of us, I was at home with my whole family. So let's just say that I took refugee in my attic, where my parents' collection of fresh computers and consoles were. And at first, I just used them to play classical games and soon I found myself wanting to clean them and restore the systems, bringing them back to life as they once were. And I think the turning point came when I had a problem with my V20 and basically it had a startup issue because there was just a black screen and that's all. So I, I wasn't confident enough to start a repair by myself, so I just sent it to a technician. But to make a long story short, basically uh, he kept the motherboard and I never saw him again. So uh, I still have the empty case of my equipment with the motherboard. So from that moment on, I decided that I would do all my repairs by myself. And uh, that motivated me to learn how to fix these uh, devices by myself. So I started looking on the internet, and I started looking at other YouTubers' videos, and I started documenting myself about fixing learning um, into this world, which is a project. And in my parents' collection, one thing that really stood out was the MSX standard. And uh, I guess you all know what the MSX standard is, but it was a unified standard for home computers back in the 80s. And what really amazed me was its revolutionary idea, the fact that the different brands could cooperate with themselves really amazed me, and uh, they could work together smoothly. It really amazed me because it's how technology works today. And it's something that we always take for granted. So I felt like the idea behind the young sex standard was really ahead of its time. And laying the background for the interconnectionness that we see in modern devices. More generally, what fascinated me uh, about this system is that they were often built under tight circumstances like limited budgets or scarce materials and each technological limitation all shaped uh, these different devices and when we think about today's big topics like the AI or even going to Mars you can feel like these vintage machines are like from a different, completely different era but I think that through this modern technology owns a lot to them and these retro devices helped us to understand the core principles of technology and modern technology and without them we wouldn't have uh, smartphones, laptops or even some of the uh, ideas that still power the tech industry today. So for me these systems are more than just uh, computers, they are often real lessons in creativity, problem solving and originality. I firmly believe that studying and working with this branch machine can provide valuable insights for a new generation of uh, technicians, engineers and anyone who works with technology. They remind us that innovation doesn't come from having a powerful hardware or a high budget and it comes from making the most of what we have um, in an original and creative way and I think that's timeless, not just for the 80s. 
So um, a key chapter in history of graduate computing is the book of the NSX standard. It was, uh, in my opinion, a visionary project that emerged during a time of uh, big changes and technological transformation. This was the early 80s, so a period when the world of computing was evolving very quickly and rapidly. And the background for the future of personal computers has been laid. Um, while people in the United States were using Commodore 64s and Apple's computers, something really unique was happening in Japan, which is, of course, the MSX project. And the story began with Katsuki Konishi, an uh, influential figure who had already collaborated with Bill Gates to help develop one of the earliest versions of the MS-DOS. And uh, he had uh, an ambitious goal, a very ambitious goal, which is to create a single standard that would unite different manufacturers, different companies. A dream that uh, was almost unthinkable in an era where um, that kind of connection between devices was really rare. And in the 83, Nishi succeeded to bring together major Japanese companies of the time, including Sony, Panasonic, Toshiba, and others, to create a shared platform. And the goal was simple, um, if you think about how technology works today, but it was uh, revolutionary to build a computer that could run the same software regardless the company manufacturers. And the name itself, which is machine with software extensibility, I think perfectly reflects the vision of creating an accessible and compatible computing platform. And uh, unfortunately, the MSX standards in getting the same uh, traction in uh, Europe or America, where companies like Commodore and Apple had already um, established a strong presence. And in Japan, however, it had a far reaching impact. But the real influence of the MSX extended beyond the commercial success, it was a cultural phenomenon. And that brought many people closer to technology and promoted collaboration, a uh, collaborative approach that was rare at the time. And today we can see the legacy of the MSX in many aspects of the modern technology. The idea of architectures working together uh, across different platforms or, um, and creating something accessible and shared technology left a mark for sure. And um, it's a lesson in innovation, a model of technological inclusivity that in some ways anticipated the direction of the tech industry. And so it was kind of like a vision because of that, uh, it still has a lot of to teach us. And personally, every time I work with an uh, MSX, I can't help to think about the foresight of those who created it. Uh, it reminds me that technology can be a tool for connection and collaboration, um, something beyond just profit and being a successful business. So um, I know that it was a, a short presentation, but uh, in conclusion, the MSX represents not only an important chapter in the history of technology, but also a bridge connection of the past to the present offering us an opportunity to reflect on how to build the future uh, of technology. Looking at the modern innovation, it's clear that many of the fundamental principles that characterize the MSX are still at the core of what we do today. From how we design our devices to how we interact with technology. And the MSX reminds us that technology isn't just about having a powerful hardware or speed, but it's primarily about creativity um, and community, because the, the passion for historical technology encourages us to reflect on the value of inclusive innovation, which not only addresses technical needs, but also stimulates um, curiosity experimentation and sharing knowledge. 
And these values are even more important by an era where technology is evolving very rapidly and offering unprecedented opportunities to transform our daily lives, our society, and also how we relate to the world. So looking ahead, we can build the future of technology on solid foundations. Uh, those left to us by pioneers like Asuka Nishi and the team behind the MSX standard just has the MSX inspired a generation of developers and creatives. Today we can continue to build a technological world that is accessible, modular, creative and collaborative just as the MSX standard taught us. And by doing so, we can not only honor the past, but also shape the future that continues to change and innovate and improve our lives. So I know that was a short presentation, but uh, of course there is another uh, presentation. So if you have uh, any questions, um, I will be happy to answer. I'm a true junkie for uh, people who fix this stuff on YouTube. Like, I just cannot get enough of that stuff. What I'm always wondering, though, is what happens to the stuff you fix? Where does it end? Well, I, I just um, wrap them so they don't get... Um, so I don't scratch them or um, break the case and something, and I just put them in my collection. So everything I receive, um, most, most of the things I repair are things that people send me, but uh, I don't do repairs for other people. I receive these computers and then I try to fix them, but after I fix them, I usually I just use them or just wrap them and leave them in my collection, but they did just say in the collection. Great, thank you. Great. Okay, okay so thank you very much.